Hey there, this is Katherine Cartwright. Welcome to Inktoberfest. I am going to be sharing some ideas with alcohol lift ink, but I'm going to begin by creating some panels using some Yupo paper and my alcohol inks and some alcohol blending solution. Now, I kind of lost my mind, I admit it. I'm going to make eight cards. Um, you won't see all of it on camera, but there will be a lot of um, ink blending with these alcohol inks. And anyway, I hope you enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so like I said, I'm going to make some panels here. And I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks, things that I have learned over time using alcohol inks. Um, I'm using this Yupo paper which is perfect for blending my alcohol inks. I've got that little tool that I'm using to move it around. You can use it, um, the alcohol inks without a tool. I am going to use it in most of the video because I have found it to be super, super helpful. And then the liquid that I'm adding, that big clear bottle, is um, alcohol blending solution. So that helps move your alcohol inks. And you also can see that it lightens them a little bit, but it gives them the ability to move around your paper. You get these really cool effects and they're just so much fun. Alcohol inks for me personally are a product that I love to get them all out and I'm using an assortment of colors um, to choose from. Maker Forte has a ton of colors and I love that you can buy them individually. So if you have a favorite color that you use up, uh, it's easy to obtain just that color. You know, because like with inks and as a card maker, there are things that you really, really uh, come to enjoy using. So that's another thing that I love is that they have those individually. Okay, so I'm using my little blowing tool here. Um, it's very affordable and it's a lot of fun. And it's a great way to make these backgrounds. So I'm just laying this ink on. You can keep adding more blending solution if you want. If you want it lighter or if you want to move the ink around, you can leave it just like this and let it dry. Uh, that's the thing I love is it's totally up to you. Um, but like I was saying, you know, I like to pull them all out and then take an afternoon to just create some panels. They're so much fun in that way. I like to mix colors. Sometimes you find things that work. Sometimes you find things that don't work. Um, and after I create these panels, I'm going to start lifting this alcohol ink off the paper. That's what this video is really all about. But I definitely want to highlight alcohol inks um, because they are super fun. And I'm pointing out that little kind of splatter there. You just get a lot of fun effects. So I encourage you, if you've got a couple in your craft stash, to pull them out and just start playing with them. I find, too, that the alcohol inks blend very nicely. Um, you may get a little bit of brown, but it's really not a muddy brown. And I wouldn't even say it's really brown. Um, you know, if you take a bunch of inks and you mix them together like stamp inks, you're stamping, eventually you will just get brown because all the colors will blend together. But these alcohol inks really don't, don't perform that way. So you just get these really fun um, looks to them and colors when you add that blending solution. So again, I just encourage you to try them out. They're so much fun. All right, so I'm adding some more blending solution there. And, um, and then to let them dry, they dry very quickly. You don't have to do anything special to them. Since they are alcohol inks, they are going to dry very quickly. That's why you uh, tend to work quickly, because if you just drop an ink on there, uh, the alcohol ink on your paper, it will just eventually dry pretty quickly. Um, and it kind of sits on top of this Yupo paper, and that's what allows it to move around instead of soaking into... Uh, a, a cotton cardstock, you know, a cardstock that has linen in it where it absorbs into it. This more sits on top and moves around on top of this Yupo paper. So again, you can just keep adding the blending solution until you get it the way that you want it. And you can stop there. I could just leave those little drops there and let them dry. Or I can um, add the more solution there and it allows me to move it around to get it just how I want it to be. 
But something that's fun too is they'll all be unique. There will not be two of the same. I guess you really could try and recreate it, but I don't think that that would work. Um, with the surface tension of paper, it just they would just be all individual and unique. Okay, so this panel has dried. So I'm going to start doing the process of lifting the ink off. So this ink pad to the right is called the Alcohol Lift Ink. It's a formula that allows you to apply the ink to your stamp, stamp the alcohol ink panel that you have created, and I'm going to lift that ink off of there. So I'm just deciding which stamp I want to use. This one is a pretty fine line uh, drawing of um, a fun bottle that has a sunset in it and a palm tree. And that's what I decided to use on this first panel. So I'm just putting mine back into the stamp positioner. And then I'm going to come over here and ink this up really well. It's a clear ink. And then I also have a refill that I'm going to be using too later in the video. I've got a piece of regular cardstock to the side. I'm going to try and lift this ink up and then stamp it. If you work really quickly, you can get some stamped image. I'm not sure I'll get a lot on this because it is such a fine line, um, but I'm going to try it out. So I've got that inked. You can see that it has pulled some of the ink off my panel. And then I'm going to bring that piece of cardstock. This is just a piece of white cardstock, and I'm going to quickly stamp it onto uh, that piece of paper. And you'll see I get a very light image, and so that one didn't turn out as dark as I hoped. But then uh, later in the video, I'm going to have another one that I had a really good result with. So hang around for that. After I've pulled this ink off, I'm taking my microfiber towel. You can use a cotton towel, whatever you've got. I have some of these microfiber towels that I love to use in my craft room because I can wash them um, or if they get too yucky, I can toss them. But that way I'm not just using constant uh, paper towels. So after I dry that one off, I'm going to let that sit and I'll come back to it. I'm moving on to another panel. I'm using a background stamp here. And you can see that um, it looks beautiful. It's very delicate. But I'm going to blot off any extra ink on there. Uh, because it is, if there's ink on there and it hasn't dried and I move it, it can kind of shift um, the ink removal process, I guess you would say. And so if I make sure that it's dry, that I, if I move ink to the side, it will take that ink off too. So I'm just making sure to preserve my image, that it's nice and dry, and then I'm going to buff it out with my towel. And you can see I'm moving around from spot to spot. And you can see the, um, the lines from the image start to come out. It's really a cool effect. And as it sits there, you can see it kind of resist, and it turns out to be really, really neat. All right, I'm going to move on to another one. I told you I went crazy with this, and um, I'm just going to keep stamping and pulling that ink off and making some cards at the end. So I'm getting my panel uh, in here properly. I've got a foam, uh, the white foamed stamp. And I am going to ink this up really well. This is the butterflies and wildflowers, I think. The slimline is so pretty. And so I'm going to press my ink really well all over this. And then I will use that to pull my lift ink off. And let's see what kind of result I get with this one. I'm bringing my um, smisher in here so I can make sure to get a great impression. And let's see the result. You can see that ink in the reflection, and now you can see the ink on the cardstock. On the stamp, I should say. I'm pulling out my cardstock. Again, moving quickly, because it is alcohol ink, and it will dry uh, very quickly on you. So I'm just giving a good smush, and I love the way that that turned out. So cool. And then I've going to go back and repeat that same process. You can see at the top where that line is a little bit of wetness and so I'm just taking that second to get any of the extra ink on there 
before I start kind of buffing away the ink so it doesn't shift on me. And again, just moving my towel around for a clean spot. And now as I buff it, you can see it really come out, the definition. You can see the little butterflies on one of the flowers and then some of those stems. And it just looks really great. This is one of those videos where projects where it just doesn't look as pretty in, on camera as it does in person. Um, they're so beautiful, the alcohol inks. So you're just going to have to take my word for it that they ended up being really, really pretty. So I love the way that turned out. I'm going to turn that into a mini slimline card. I'm just taking care here to get the last little bit off and then I'll move on. And I love the colors together. They just look so, so much fun. And so there you can see I got two for one. All right, I've already gone ahead and done another panel with some purples and blues. I've got this stencil here and I am going to be using um, this ink tool, but I have got a felt pad on here. I am using the reinker that I mentioned earlier in the video so you are able to reink your pad because it will dry out over time. And I am just adding a little bit of ink a little bit of the removal ink into my image and you can see it's starting to pull some of that off. So this takes a couple of minutes and I'm letting it work but I'm taking my time and I'm being careful. I don't want to have too much of the alcohol lift ink on my piece of felt because I don't want it to smush underneath the stencil and, and get anywhere else. I really just want to pull these little bats from the stencil off of my image and you can see there I'm kind of rubbing it off a little bit so you can see that it's definitely taking this ink off which is such a cool process and then once I get that off I and I'm happy with where I am I'm going to keep going a little bit so this took probably a couple of minutes um, I sped it up so you didn't have to see me doing this uh, too long but you get the idea so you can see that I worked it until it really was removing that ink. Isn't that cool? And then once again, repeat the same process of dabbing that off and then I will buff and remove the ink. And you'll see that it, the bats on this really start to pop off. I love the way that this turned out. And again, it didn't take very long at all and with that little extra tool, the little ink blending tool, you just need the felt to pull that off. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp again. I've got this Floating Ginkgos, one of my favorite sets. And I'm going to ink this up and apply this to the panel. I also have the words with sympathy. And I'm just going to ink that up. And I'm going to ink it up twice because it's a really fine image. And I want to pull as much ink as I can off but I want it to still be subtle and it will be because the the line of the stamp is not super thick but you can see how it's starting to resist and come off of there I'm going to try and stamp this one and again this lighter color it was a pretty light image so I'll save that for another project all right so now I can buff this out and here is the magic. You get to see all of those gorgeous ginkgo leaves come out off of this panel. Ginkgo trees are my absolute favorite tree. Um, my husband and I discovered them many years ago, probably 20 years ago. We were in Philadelphia and um, we encountered this uh, area that had these gorgeous, gorgeous yellow trees and we just didn't know what they were. And so my mom told us that they were ginkgo trees and they were gorgeous. So we have two of them in our yard and they are beautiful. They turn this gorgeous yellow in the fall and I love the way that they rustle in the wind. So I am all about ginkgos. I have multiple stamp sets um, and I know Maker Forte has several ginkgo products. 
So I highly recommend them. But look at that. How beautiful. Okay. So I've shown you how to create some panels, but I did want to show you what you could do with the felts. So I use that same felt, uh, different felt piece, but the same ink tool, I should say. I'm going to add some ink directly to this piece of felt, and I'm going to run this across my piece of Yupo. And look at that gorgeous background. So if you are not one who feels comfortable making it with all the little drips and drops and things like that, and you really want a more uniform look, this is a great way to get an awesome background. And then you can still lift uh, the alcohol ink off of it. I'm going to do that in just a second. But I wanted to show you that there were some different ways that you could use your alcohol inks to create backgrounds. And I've got this last color here. I'm just going to add a couple more drops. And then I will do that across the bottom. So much fun. And you can see that it dries very quickly. You can see in my camera that it dries pretty instantly. The alcohol evaporates and leaves you with this beautiful kind of matte finish. Gorgeous. And so easy. You could do this with any color. Um, you could just have one color, however you wanted to make your card. Okay. So I have got this airmail stamp. I've got another one of those um, white uh, rubber stamps. And I've inked this up really well. And I'm going to smush this again. And I'm going to remove the ink. And you can see it worked really, really well on this one. You can see immediately the words pop off the page. And then I'm going to do the same thing I've been doing. I'm going to take that cardstock, pop that in right away and I get another image. So I could use this for another card. And I'm going to repeat the process again, doing the bottom half of my uh, Yupo paper. And I'm just going to ink that up one more time and pull that ink off. How cool is that? It's so much fun because of the great reveal of it. And I will once again do the same thing dab off any extra ink and then I will um, dry that off and buff it off and you'll really be able to see the image come to life. I took one more second here to stamp off another piece of card. So I've got a couple of more cards I can use for card fronts for um, my uh, finished products. I'm gonna, you can see I do have some ink there. You can see a little bit of kind of the pooling and that's what I'm taking care to kind of buff off of there and make sure that that is dry. And then I can start really working the resist part of this, lifting that ink off. I think this one was my favorite one, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I really like the ginkgo one. So um, be sure and leave me a comment and let me know. I'm going to show you eight cards. And I'm hoping that you have a favorite. And if you do, be sure and let me know which one. Because I'm dying to know if you liked one uh, over the others. Okay, so again, just taking care of buffing off any of that ink. You can see that ink coming off onto my microfiber towel. And then I have another fun background. Love that. All right, well, I couldn't waste this background. So I wanted to try an ink blend over it. I have not done this before where I have lifted the ink off. So I wanted to try it and it worked beautifully. So this is tea dye. I've got a couple of my distress inks out and I thought it would be cool to make this look very vintagey and um, that it had been, you know, sent through the mail or something like that since it's got these postmarks and the world stamps and all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm going to work my ink all around. I'm going to take a little piece of tape here to keep my finger out of that distress ink. And I'm just going to go all around here. And I love the way that that has turned out. You could leave it just like this, but I'm going to come back with a little bit of a darker color here and just kind of go around my edges to age it up a little bit more. And then I will turn this one into one of those eight cards that I referenced earlier. So I told you I did a lot. I had a, so much fun with this product. And this is one of those things, if you can create some alcohol ink panels, 
and then you can just start lifting with your stamps and stencils. Um, it's, it's a whole new ball game of things that you can create. All right. So I'm happy with how that turned out. And then I'm going to come back with the tea dye and kind of blend those two colors together. That was vintage photo was the darker color. Okay. Love that. All right. So we made it to the end of the video. Thanks for sticking with me and learning all about the alcohol lift ink. I made some cards with these. I used some ephemera from, um, my craft stash that I think was from Hedgehog Hollow. I've got some other stamps here. I stamped on one card and then I added a, a little die cut shape. I love the ginkgo one that I just applied directly to a card base. All of these, except for the little slim lines that miss you and the thinking of you, those are mini slim lines, which are three and a half by six and a half. And then on that bottle one, I just used a square to cut that out and mount that to some pattern paper. The with love, I just stamped that. And then here is my um, bat card. And I just cut some letters from my craft stash boo and added that onto my bats panel. That's another mini slim line. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some tips and tricks and ideas of how to use alcohol lift ink in your craft room. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.